Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Dream Big Today. I was with you this morning at eight o'clock and here we are at noon today. And so we like to do noon nuggets, just about 15 minutes worth of encouragement or just something else about the Bible study from this morning, from today's word. And this is, this is the one year uh, Bible study. Let me hold up my Bible. You've probably seen this before. And so uh, we do this every day. And I don't know if you know this or not, if you've been following us along, but there is also a one year Bible companion that kind of touches base a little bit. I mean, it's just it's just a few snippets for each day's reading, just in case you wanted to dig in a little bit more. And that's always fun to do because it's it's good to hear another another thought or or somebody else that's researched or somebody's got inspiration or whatever they got out of the word today. So you can just you can do it yourself or or you know reading something else. And so anyway, I I do all of it. I like to I like to study and, and see what the, the spirit is talking to me. Then I also like to to read other other versions and nice renditions and everything like that. Hey Cassie, yes. Yes. I you know what? I, I love jumping in here and digging in the word. I could probably do it all day long, but sometimes you got to stop and go do laundry and and other things too. So anyway, let's get started on this today. So, and also put in your prayer request and your praise reports in at noon too. Donna will be recording these too, and we'll be, we'll pray over all of that. And so I wanted to go with Psalms today, Psalms 130. And it's a short one. It's only eight verses. I thought this is, this is perfect for 15 minutes. But then as I started digging into it, I thought, oh, there's there's really a lot in this Psalms. And as as we go through in each every day on reading, well, whether it's Psalms or Proverbs or what, you know, whenever you start just focusing on one scripture at a time, it kind of changes a little bit. I mean, that's why we should be studying anyway. But as we as we start, let's let's jump into here. This, this psalmist is, has really got a, a heart-wrenching psalm. It's like, well, this psalm is like another one in the series titled Song of Ascents. It begins with a personal testimony of God's rescuing uh, from the depths of guilt. And I thought, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I was just talking to somebody earlier today that had a, had a relative that is suffering from depression, you know, young person don't know what their next turn is going to be. And as I started reading this again today, I thought of her and I thought, man, it says, Lord, I cry out to you in the depths of my despair. And so when we're thinking about our depths, man, you know, I, I just think the worst thing for me is just have this dream that I am, I am sinking into the ocean, into the sea, and it is cold and it's dark and the water is coming all around me and I can't breathe and you can't see, you can't hear. This servant could still call out to God, but there was they were praying, they were struggling to focus. They were praying, they was hoping God would hear. They were praying even when the walls were closing in. They were praying even when they were overwhelmed. What a lesson. Do you, whenever we feel like that we don't have another thing that we can possibly utter to tell God how bad we need him, all you have to do is tell God how bad you need him because he already knows what you did, what you where you're at today, and what you will do. So you you just need to talk to him. In verse two, it says, "Hear my vo voice, O oh God. Answer this prayer and hear my plea for mercy." Just one more time, God. Just one more time. I need you. I need you. The turmoil heard in this plea is painful. Verse three, and I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, by the way. Verse three says, Lord, if you measured us and marked us with our sins, who would ever have their prayers answered? 
man, God, if you, if you kept a record, if you kept a record of everything that I know that I did, but you know, I mean, back up, like I haven't killed anybody. I haven't robbed anybody. I haven't cursed outwardly. Oh, but I did, I did have some hate in my heart. I did hold back when I should not have. I, I've judged people. I've condemned with my heart. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you now. The writer knows that he can't stand before the king in his own righteousness because he can't. He just, there's just no way. Verse four, it says, but your forgiving love is what makes you so wonderful. No wonder you are loved and worshiped. Forgiveness. There is free, full pardon from the sovereign king. It's his prerogative to forgive, but he delights in doing it. If God were to execute justice upon everybody, there would be nobody left. But grace leads the way to a holy regard of God and a fear of grieving him. Verse five says, this is why I wait upon you expecting your breakthrough for your word brings me hope. I am counting on you, God. My hope is in you. I wait expectantly for your love, for your appearing. I wait in an act of service. He is worth waiting on. Waiting. When we wait, patiently wait. It increases our faith. It exercises that patience and it trains our submission because he's not saying no or yes. He might be saying not yet. You're not ready yet. Let's give you a few more days. Let's give you a few more months or even years. Let's patiently wait. Let's wait on that. In verse six, I'll look at my... Uh, New Living Translation, I long for the Lord more, more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. In the Passion, it says, I long for you more than any watchman would long for the morning light. I watch and I wait for you, O oh God, through the night. Have you ever set up, I know you have, if you have children or you have somebody that you care for, and being up all night long with them. And you thought, man, if I could just make it till the sun comes up, something about that freshness of that new day that just makes you anticipate, look forward to it because another day is coming. His mercies are new every day. And we just think if we could just get to one more day, if you're the guard of a city, he's watching the horizon. He has been on guard on on point all night long and he's getting he's growing tired he knows as soon as that sun cup pops up then his shift will be over he will be able to go home and go to bed that parent that's up with that sick child they're thinking man if i could just get to the next day and they will be better that fresh freshness that new hope in a new day the psalmist's wait was more than expectant. It was more longingly, and it was deep hope. Then verse seven, O Israel, keep hoping, keep trusting, and keep waiting on the Lord, for he is tenderhearted, kind, and loving. He has a thousand ways to set your, you free. God's got great things in store for his people. We can't, even, we can't even understand 
how much he loves us, how much he cares for us, what he, what, what heaven's going to look like. We can see, we can see pictures of something that somebody's created that's absolutely beautiful and it's just great. But you know what, this is just what the human mind can create. Just imagine what God's got going on. It is so much better than anything we could ever guess or request in our wildest dreams. The unfailing love and redemption is for us in God. Does that comfort you? It does me. It does me. The psalmist has put his faith and his hope in the Lord. He's looking at the giver before he sees what the gift is. Verse 8. He himself, not somebody else, you're God's princess. You're God's prince. He loves you. He himself is going to redeem you. He's not given that job to any of the angels, anybody else. He says, you are so important to me that I, myself, will redeem you. He will ransom you from the cruel slavery of your sins. Oh, and you know what? I've had terrible sins, every kind of sin. And, and it, the sins, what, what all could that be? It, well, you know what? It, it's not something that you just list. You can just call it <clears throat> immoral or gross behavior. You can, you can call it denying God. You can call it an idol worship session that you have whenever you're counting your money or you're looking at your, your pretty shiny things that you have around your house or that you're watching on TV or that you're reading about. Whatever that is, is a danger. It's our, it's our worst dangers. And all we have to do is confess that. And he will wipe it all away. This let us, lets us know that he's coming back. He's coming back and he will redeem you. What a joyful experience expectation of him coming back he's made you with a purpose with a, a reason and and all we have to do is just humble ourselves and submit and confess and let the holy spirit just do a work in us just look how we read this morning in acts about philip listening to the holy spirit and the holy spirit told him to run and he ran the Holy Spirit told him to, to talk to the eunuch, and he did. He, he baptized him, and he disappeared. The Holy Spirit is so involved in our lives just like that. He wants us to be with him. He does not want to lose not one person. He is our Father, our Father who art in heaven. And you know what? I can't wait for us all to join together one of these days when we all are in heaven and we get to just lock arms with each other. Nancy, and let's see, who else did I see on there? Cassie, Julie, everybody that's on, Sherry, uh, Rita. We will be all up there and we will be just singing and we will be praising because he loves us and he has got us in the palm of his hands. And so I am so glad that you joined us today. And so I, I pray that the rest of your day is just as awesome as the first part. And so I will see you back tomorrow. Elizabeth is gone on a business trip. And so I will see you tomorrow. And so we love you. And yes, Cassie says one huge party. That's right. Get your, get your holy party hats on because we're getting ready to have that party. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.
Yes, it is.